Hey everyone, welcome to the next video in the pre-education series. Today I am going to dig a little bit deeper into my particular experience with the MCAT. I know I've talked about it a little bit in detail before. Also ignore the air conditioner, it is very hot in my home. But today we're going to talk about that a little bit more in depth. I will tell you guys what I did to study, some of the biggest mistakes that I've made, and some things that I'm hoping you'll learn from so that you don't make the same mistakes as me. This is a pretty quick one. Um, the MCAT is such a unique experience for every person, so I don't like to sort of go super in depth and tell you every little single thing that I did because my study technique is totally different from any other pre-med students, and so is yours. So take all of this with a grain of salt, but I'm mostly just here to share some of the biggest rookie mistakes that I made. It ended up working out okay, and I think that's because I caught a lot of my mistakes, my mistakes in the end. But please, if possible, avoid the mistakes that I made, and you're gonna kill it on the MCAT. It's that one exam that you wanna take just once, if possible, give it your best try the first time through, and you'll be thankful for it in the long run. So a little bit of a summary of my experience taking the MCAT. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos, you probably know that I decided to apply straight through to medical school. So it was sort of on a whim after some advice from my boss, you know, they gave them their enthusiastic support and said, we'll support your candidacy, we'll write you letters, I think you should apply now. And I was stressed, so I did it. Um, it was a very stressful process. I'm glad I did it in the long run, but there were definitely easier, less stressful ways to do it. Um, but that meant that I decided the beginning of my junior year to take the MCAT, and I decided to push it until the second semester of my junior year, with my original test date being in late April, mid to late April. Um, what my first mistake was doing was not having enough just respect for the beast that is the MCAT. So I like school i'm a decent test taker so i figured i'm just going to treat this like any other exam and just build out a little extra time what i didn't realize that studying for the mcat for a lot of students can be a full-time job and i wish that i had budgeted that for myself much earlier on it would have saved me a lot of heartache and stress and disappointment um originally i started studying for the mcat during the spring semester of my junior year while i was taking physics 2 and biochemistry and it was our first virtual semester in the COVID-19 pandemic and it just was a wash. I ended up prioritizing my current coursework and exams that were the next week over the MCAT exam which was in a couple of months and I couldn't even blame myself for it because I knew that my current grades were just as important if not more important as my MCAT grades down the road. I was stressing to say the least. Um, I talked to a lot of different mentors and really tried to get everyone's pieces of advice, but my first mistake was just not having enough respect for this exam. And it sounds kind of harsh, but I have no problem admitting that I thought, oh yeah, I can like study for this, it'll be fine. I'll give myself that like three month window, 300 hours of study time, I'll balance it beautifully with school and it'll go splendidly. Not the case. Um, I ended up pushing my MCAT date back twice the first time I pushed it was because of the COVID-19 pandemic. It just got canceled, which worked to my advantage because I wasn't ready. And then the second time I pushed it again, up all the way up until August 1st, which is when I actually took the MCAT. Um, that worked out beautifully, well, more beautifully than studying during the semester because I was able to finish my coursework, give myself like a little five to seven day break, and then hit the books hard to study for the MCAT all summer. So first piece of advice, have respect for that exam from the jump and you'll set yourself up for success down the road. The second piece of advice sort of builds into that first piece and that's just to build time and that's part of having respect for it. I did not build enough time ahead of time and it wasn't until a couple months into my studying that I realized the average student takes about 300 hours to study for the MCAT and once I sort of had that rough golden number I was able to better make a schedule for myself. Uh, I self-studied for the exam. I didn't have the money to pay for a Kaplan course or a Princeton review course. So I got some books donated to me from a friend slash some other summer programs and studied from those. Um, I also used the exam crackers books and any free exams that I can get, plus the AAMC bundles and um, some other cheaper one-off exams. Uh, but I did not pay for a course. And so I had to use sort of my resources and my idea of how long a typical student studies for this exam to build the time into my study schedule. 300 hours was like my golden number, but it's different for everyone depending on how you study. That worked well enough for me, um, but that's sort of tip number two to go in with one. In addition to having respect for the exam, make sure that respect takes into account the amount of time that you as an individual will need to study for the MCAT. And you'll learn that just by looking at other exams that you've taken and sort of multiplying your study time by maybe five or 10. In theme with that previous tip is to collect your resources early 
and do not feel obligated to jump right into a course. That decision requires a lot of thought, a lot of money, and a lot of self-reflection. Um, everybody asks, if you have the discipline, you don't need to take a course, and that's definitely true. Um, I had the discipline, but in hindsight, I wish sometimes that I would have taken a course. I would have been broke. Maybe I would have had to push my application cycle, but it would have been easier on me stress-wise. Um, so trust your gut and sort of take resources as you go early in the process. Say you're a freshman and you're not taking the MCAT until your junior year or maybe your gap year. That doesn't mean you can't sort of keep your ears open and find out if your school has programs that offer that offer free MCAT courses or if there's a summer program that you can do as a rising junior where they offer you a free MCAT book. Sort of look at those things and keep an open mind because if you can gather the majority of your resources well in advance, you don't even have to open them. You'll just save yourself a lot of time and money down the road, which is something I was really thankful that I did. Um, I wasn't planning on taking the MCAT until my junior year, but coincidentally, a summer program that I did as a rising junior offered me a free MCAT book that saved me 300 plus dollars, which was huge. And it made my studying a lot easier and a lot cheaper. So try to collect your resources a little early if possible. Um, if not, you will have to maybe save up a pretty penny or take out a personal loan or lean on family or friends to cover some of the expenses. But just keeping an eye out a little bit early is really, really helpful. This next tip is one that I particularly struggled with a lot. And if I have to go on and give any piece of advice about the MCAT to anybody is to remember that this is your exam. This is your journey to medicine. This is your application to medical school and nobody else's. I have to keep teaching myself that comparison is the thief of joy. And I have to remind myself to get off of Instagram and to get off of YouTube, despite me being on it right now. And remember that everybody is so different. Everyone's gonna get different scores in the MCAT and just because they get one score and I get another, doesn't mean that I can't get in and looking up YouTube videos about how someone raised their score by 10 points in one month just stressed me out. And I did that way too much leading up into my exam dates because I was stressed. I didn't think I was gonna get the score I wanted. I was talking to mentors and they were telling me to just push, not apply this cycle, take a gap year. And I had to go back to an earlier tip that I mentioned and just trust my gut and know that if it was my time, it was my time and that's what I felt like. But if I could go back, I would unwatch so many YouTube videos, ones that were coming out and saying, do this exact step and you'll get like the best possible score on cars or um, sort of here's exactly the, the study technique that I did to get a 520 on the MCAT in like two months. And here I am watching this video a month out from my MCAT test date. Those do nothing for me. Maybe they do something for you, but that's something I really wish I didn't do. It just stressed me out. Um, and another, as a result of watching all of those videos, I was switching up my study technique so frequently. I probably used four different study techniques in the three to four months that I took to, to study for the MCAT. And that really bit me in the butt. I feel strongly that I could have gotten better on the MCAT. It wasn't by any means a bad score, um, but it's definitely not the, the highest score that I felt I was capable of. And I think a lot of that achievement had to do with the fact that I was so busy focusing on what other people were doing and not focusing on playing to my strengths as a test taker. So take every piece of advice with a grain of salt, which is why I'm sort of steering clear from like my study methods, because they're particular to me. Talk to a learning advisor, take a, a learning assessment and figure out what's best for you. And then early in the process, if you want to watch those sorts of YouTube videos about how people nailed their study technique, that's fine. But about halfway through and beyond, you have to tune out the noise, trust your gut and study the best way that's best for you. And finally here, um, this played true for me more than any other thing in my application cycle. Uh, my MCAT of all of my application materials was probably the most average part of my application. Not to say that it was bad, but it was just the most average part of my application. And for me, it reigned true more than ever that your MCAT is truly just a number. I think the COVID-19 pandemic had a lot to do with how my score was weighed against that of other students and weighed against the rest of my application. But I think this theme of the MCAT having slightly less of a weight on who you are as an applicant is around to stay. There are so many other assessments and interviews and hoops you have to jump through to get into medical school. And I think more and more schools are moving away from so much pressure on the MCAT and moving toward how great are your conversations on interview day? How well can you express your passions on a secondary application? 
and things like that, which give a better evaluation of who you are as a person. You can have a million and 10 great test takers, but not every million and 10 one of those people are gonna be a great physician. So if your score doesn't turn out to what you want it to be, but it's still within range of what you feel you need to be a competitive applicant, take some time and think about that. Just because you get a percentile or so lower than what you were aiming for, doesn't mean you're out of this race. It doesn't mean you can't apply to medical school. A lot of people would have told me that I should have stayed behind and not applied this cycle. And if I had taken their advice and only focused on the importance of that number, I wouldn't be going to Harvard Medical School starting this summer. On paper, I probably shouldn't have gotten into the school that I did, but I'm a firm believer that numbers are numbers and the right school for you will recognize who you are as a person and want you there because of the qualities and passions and attributes that they're gonna to bring to, your to their class and to their community. That was probably the biggest thing I learned in this entire application process, a wild one at that, but this sort of video rounded out to be about a little bit more than my MCAT experience and more so about my outlook really throughout the whole process. You have to learn to trust who you are, what you're capable of, tune out the noise, have respect for this exam, build enough time, collect resources early, but above all else, remember that the MCAT is just a number. There's so many other parts of your application that you can focus on and highlight on, even if you don't get the score that you want. And I will see you in medical school.